The Sony A9. Last time I used it, it overheated. So Sony gave me a replacement unit, hoping that if I test it again, it wouldn't overheat. Overheating test, don't really have time for this. So let's speed this up a little bit. Oh, why do us guys always miss the target? Conclusion, it got a bit hot. Now, let me be frank. No, actually I'll still be Kai. I wasn't out filming a review, I was shooting something with Atomos and director cinematographer Rodney Charters. I don't usually wear my jeans that low unless I'm really dying for a shit. So we're doing this, um, doing this shot, trying to look gangster. Yeah. Bit of, bit of ass, a bit of <laughs> ass crackage. But I've got, I've got my crap pants on today. I've got my shit your pant pants. Should have brought my Calvins. Dan and co were setting up and then brought along their friend Alexa. She's hot. I had the A9 and lots of Dan's lenses to play with. And then there's Maria, not a camera, former Olympic skater and model. So with all of these elements in place, it would seem wrong not to take some pictures with the A9, right? As I was saying, I didn't film a review and this is not a review, but I've shot the A9 on three separate occasions now and I've covered quite a lot of it in the first video. So this is kind of just a wrap up, especially as this camera's garnered quite a bit of hate, but also a lot of love. And I think Maria is the latter. At one point while we were setting up, Maria decided to take the A9 for a little test. Conclusion, dunno, she looks happy though. Whatever, I just wanted it back. Hello. The A9 is an oddity in that it packs a huge punch in an easy to use hipster ready body. Ready to shoot. Okay, we got some natural light coming in. That's not because I don't know how to use artificial lighting. But anyway, let's get the shoot started. Okay. Uh... Yeah, easy to use. Think kittens and candy floss. Oh yeah. I'm just going to keep my finger on this trigger until either the camera explodes or I do. Sorry, that sounded wrong. The A9 is not something that I pick for studio use. You can get something like the A7R2, which offers up more resolution for a cheaper price. But having said that, the 24 megapixels, four more megapixels than the 1DX2 or the D5, offers up plenty of detail. The raw files look pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. When I shoot JPEGs, artificial lighting, auto white balance, I don't know, it's the skin colours. It's something that I found when vlogging with the Sony cameras with auto white balance on. The skin colours look off. But to be fair, shooting in daylight with auto white balance, standard picture profile, the skin colours look great. Overall, I like the image quality. Of course, you'd be shooting raw in the studio. It didn't take much tweaking to get it looking like this. For sports shooters shooting JPEG, it's decent, although artificial lighting, auto white balance, not so hot. It's looking good. One issue that people talk about is the banding. Jared Poland mentioned it, Dig Lloyd, DP Review. One of the situations it's supposed to come out in is ISO 100, underexposed sky, red channel. Maybe I'm just doing it wrong, but I couldn't see any. With regards to the Jared Poland video, it's to do with the extremely high frequency 7700 hertz LED advertising boards, coupled with the extremely fast shutter speed and electronic shutter. So it can happen with any cameras with an electronic shutter, but it's not limited to just cameras with electronic shutters. It can happen with mechanical shutter cameras too. Go read all the geeky lowdown on DP Review, page five. On a positive note, it is one of the most insane cameras I've ever used for action. This carrot is a beast. Note how much of a twonk one looks when taking continuous burst in total silence. Oh yeah, now I've got this on electronic shutter. This does 20 FPS. That's insane. Oh yes. It's crazy to think that it shoots at 20 FPS. It's almost a video, but the focus is pretty quick and accurate, even in quite low light. The hit rate is good, excuse the pun, and the no viewfinder blackout is brilliant, but it takes a bit of getting used to it first because you like watching a video. But with such a manic burst, you have to accept that has quite a non-manic downtime. <laughs> okay, all right, camera's saying no. All right, and break. I mean, that is annoying. While the buffer is clearing, you're basically a spectator for 30 seconds plus. 
Now with this electronic shutter, 20 FPS, this shoots me done in a matter of seconds. And we're done in fact. Not sure what else to do now. Hmm. In the end, I felt like I didn't need to do a dedicated A9 review because my thoughts haven't really changed since I first handled and tested it, even though I didn't really have that much time with it. It's quite mind-blowing to have this kind of performance in a mirrorless camera. Photographing sports and action with the A9 is a whole new experience. It's stealthy, almost creepy when the camera's not making a noise and you've just reeled off 100 images of someone without them knowing. High-end DSLRs now have competition and it's not like for like. It's the old boys versus the new kid, DSLR versus mirrorless. Will pros switch to the A9 though? I doubt you'll see many of these pitch side. I'm sure there are a number of enthusiasts with money to spend with one though. Like it or not, this camera is proof that mirrorless not only makes sense in terms of form, but also the function in quite an insane way. And in that respect, whether it's adopted or accepted by the masses, the A9 is the game changer. I lose. I signed up.